We'll be dealing with power settings mostly along with a couple Hyperland settings as well. So let's get into it. Now, as for the power settings, we're going to be working with three things over here. Okay, so let me just outline them for you in this beautiful document. So the first thing is going to be auto CPU freq or power profiles daemon. I'm going to describe each of these ones to you. Okay, I'm going to describe this daemon to you as well so that you can decide whether you want to use the daemon or whether you want to use this CPU frequency util. Okay, now after that, we're going to be dealing with Super GFX CTL. This applies to you if you have an NVIDIA card. If not, you can skip this part. And also, as a bonus, if you're using an ASUS machine, if you're using an ASUS laptop, then I will also tell you the packages that you're supposed to install and configure so that you can get the best experience out of your ASUS computer. Now, with that being said, let's just get started. So I'm going to move this over here. And the first thing we want to do is set up either auto CPU frec or the power profiles daemon. Now, as for this daemon, it's actually simpler to set this up first. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Then after that, we'll move on to auto CPU frec, which is what I use to squeeze every single last bit of performance that I can out of this machine. In fact, if I just show you over here, okay, it doesn't tell you, but the CPU is a Core 5 210H. It's an Intel Core 5 210H, which is pretty damn powerful. So let's get into it. First thing, as I just mentioned, we'll be installing the Power Profiles daemon. So let's do that first. If you just search for Power Profiles daemon or daemon, however you want to pronounce it, if you like daemon so much, you can just say daemon. Now with this daemon, and by the way, this S thing, it's an alias that you can configure in either Bash or ZSH that allows you to basically substitute a character or a bunch of characters, which is a string, for another bunch of characters. Basically, it's going to act as a stand-in for yay-ss. So instead of having me having to type out yay-ss every single time, it's just going to be shortened to s. So I can search whatever I want with this thing, which makes it pretty damn powerful. It really compounds over quite a long time. Now, as for Power Profiles daemon, I've already installed it, and it makes Power Profiles handling available over Dbus. Now, you don't have to exactly know what this means, okay? There's absolutely no need for you to complicate yourself with all of the inner workings of Power Profiles daemon. With some things, like with your setup, for example, yes, it's a good idea in order to figure out what exactly your setup is doing, but then when it comes to operating system level stuff, it's really something that you learn about if you have a hobby or a passion for it. So, now, what you want to do is power power profiles ctl okay this is the command power profiles ctl this is a command that we're going to use if we want if we're going to deal with the power profiles daemon so right now it's not going to work because it says unit is masked and that is for good reason because you don't want to run two particular cpu alteration utilities okay cpu performance changers at the exact same time because they're going to conflict with each other and they're going to fight for control over your cpu and that's not going to end well so whenever i put a slash here or me putting the slash here is for you to decide whether you want to use the daemon or whether you want to use this frequency util okay now the reason why i mentioned this power profile ctl thing okay is because it makes it or rather it gives you an opportunity to use different power profiles just as you would use them on a desktop environment something like gnome so if you click on this button over here somewhere at the top right on gnome you would get an option to choose between different power profiles so that would be something like balanced performance and power saver and this is actually what makes that possible if i just run it with help okay it allows you to list get set so these three are the only commands we're going to be dealing with so don't worry about anything else if i just list Right now it says unit is masked, so I'll just tell you what it does without actually showing it to you, okay? But basically, whenever you list, type power profile CTL list, it's going to show you balanced power saver or performance, depending on which profile that you currently have selected, it's going to show an asterisk next to one of them. And if you want to change that, you can easily change it with power profile CTL set and then that exact profile name. So performance would be something like performance and power saver would be exactly power saver and balanced would be just balanced and you have to get the name right otherwise power profile ctl is not going to be able to identify what profile you're talking about so that is it for power profile ctl that's all you have to do in order to configure it it's pretty simple doesn't require too much and along with this there should be a system d service so if i show you that system d service so system ctl start it probably shouldn't start but let's just get the status of our profiles daemon yeah as you can see here power profiles daemon dot service this is the thing that we need so right now it says loaded masked reason unit is masked and it says active it's inactive because it's dead 
Now, the reason why it's being masked is again, is because of this frequency util, which I will discuss next. Now, if right over here, it says inactive, or it just doesn't give you this exact output, what you want to do is just enable it and start it with systemctl enable dash dash now power profiles daemon. Remember to run with sudo because this is systemd that we're working with after all. So run this command, and then you should be able to go and use this power profiles daemon like it's nothing else. Okay, now that is power profiles daemon done. Okay, now after that, you're going to want to configure or rather, if you chose auto CPU frec, this is what you're going to want to do. Now, first thing you want to do is, of course, look up auto CPU frec in the repo to see what the package name is. And as you can see here, it's an automatic CPU speed and power optimizer. And this is under the chaotic AUR, which is basically a way to install AUR packages without having to actually compile them, which is pretty sweet. I've made a video on that in the past. If you want, you can check that out. So that's already been installed, so I'm not going to install it. Now, with auto CPU frec, there's really only a couple of things that you need to do. Now, as soon as you start the GUI, most likely it's going to ask you to install the daemon. So just press install. And once you press install, okay, when you open auto CPU frec, the desktop app, you should see something like this. So right now my CPU, or there are 12 cores that this CPU has. And so you can see their temperature, usage, and frequency over here. And right now the current governor is performance because when it's set to default, depending on the load that the system is experiencing, you can either expect it to be default or rather the governor to be power saver or performance. So as you can see, because I'm recording and doing all the other things that a demanding thing would be doing, right now the current governor is set to performance. And so with the frequency scaling, you can see battery is charging, the setting to use is performance and all the other performance settings that you would normally see. Right now it says turbo boost off because the load is not actually too much for turbo boost to kick in. And so as you can see, the frequency is also just hovering around the 1000 megahertz range. Now, if I were to change this to performance, you just need to enter in your password, make sure to type that in. And then once you do, you should see the frequencies spike up. And if you don't, it's because there's nothing really demanding that's happening. So there's no reason for it to spike up. But as you can see, it went from the low 1000s to around the mid 1000s, the mid to high 1000s. That's pretty nice. As you can see, some cores are really spiking up and turbo boost is turned on. All of that leads to whatever you're seeing over here. So that's pretty sweet. Now that is for the GPU part. My advice, if you've made it this far and you haven't configured power profiles daemon, just went with auto CPU frec, good. Now, if you are still undecided and don't know which one to pick, just trust me and pick auto CPU frec. Okay, going with power profiles daemon allows you to have a nice CLI to work with and whatnot, but then the performance gains that you get from it are pretty marginal when you compare it to auto CPU frac. So just go with that one, the one that I just showed you, okay? Now, that is for the CPU part. As for the GPU, we're going to be using a tool called Super GFX CTL. So Super GFX CTL is a tool that's used to control NVIDIA graphics cards, okay? Not just NVIDIA graphics cards, but then it's a tool for Linux graphics switching on Intel or AMD iGPUs, so integrated GPUs, and NVIDIA DGPU laptops. So you can use this if you have either one of these things, or I'll even all of them. Of course, apart from the CPU, right? Now, just install it with Super GFX CTL. i2, like literally i2, is an alias for Y-S. So once you install that, you should be met with this UI after you type in Super GFX CTL. So once you type that in, okay, this is what you see. Now. Depending on whether your laptop has a MUX switch or not, a MUX switch basically allows your laptop to use the dedicated GPU without it automatically kicking in under load. So if you have your laptop plugged in all the time, and if your laptop is really expensive and it has a MUX switch, as we call it, you would be able to run off of the dedicated GPU pretty much all the time. But if your laptop is mid-range or it has a graphics card, like mine has an RTX 5050, that laptop version, of course, you're not going to have a MUX switch, or rather this particular laptop doesn't have a MUX switch because of which I won't be able to use the GPU to render everything, or rather the dedicated GPU to use to render everything that you see on screen. And if you can get to know, you can get to know whether you have a MUX switch or not by typing in dash G. So that's going to get the current mode. Now current mode is going to be hybrid. That's going to most likely be the same for you as well. So to actually get to know that, you would have to type in dash S. So dash S gives you supported, and you should see integrated, hybrid, and dedicated if you have a MUX switch, or just integrated and hybrid if you have a normal laptop without the switch. Okay, now, 
integrated of course is just going to run on integrated graphics it's not going to use your dedicated gpu at all and hybrid is going to switch between the integrated graphics and the dedicated ones depending on the load that's currently being used that's it that is what super gfx ctl can do now it can't just show you that it can also set it so as you can see you can run it with dash m dash m integrated to change it whether you're when you're on battery okay or you can also change it to hybrid if you really want that gpu power whenever your system is under load and you don't care about battery usage that is for super gfx ctl now another thing is nvidia utils now in nvidia utils you should get you look that up as well nvidia utils okay if you're using an nvidia card okay now in this part you should be able to get a command from there called prime run now prime run allows you to run any app okay let's say i'm running Caden live okay it allows you to run any app with the dedicated gpu so if for example an app is not picking up your gpu for whatever reason you can run it with prime run and most likely it's going to pick it up or rather the gpu the dedicated gpu is going to be used in order to render that particular app if i prime run Caden live it's just going to launch it as usual but then as you can see here or rather it won't be noticeable but this is in fact running with the gpu with the dedicated one so that's a pro tip for you there to use nvidia utils and prime run whenever you want to specifically run an app or a game for that matter with the nvidia gpu now as for the asus laptops over here as for the ones who actually use asus laptops including me here's something that you should know you can install rog control center okay control center and asus ctl in order to get the most of your asus laptop now our rog control center or the raw control center gives you a couple of options as you can see here but this is not going to start unless you start the asus d service it's going to actually give you that as an error if you try and launch it from the terminal so make sure that you have sudo systemctl enable dash dash now asus d dot service asus d dot service so you type that in and once you type that in you should be able to launch rog control center okay once you launch it you should see something like this now if you're on battery the best thing for it for you to do would be to limit charging to 80 percent that way your battery pretty much stays healthy for quite a long time possibly even five to ten years if you use it right and you don't really mess around with the battery too much you can use it for again five to ten years quite easily and apart from that you can change the platform profile just make sure to choose performance if you want the best performance depending on whether you're you're on battery or not you can change it or you can go into the advanced settings and change based on throttle policy or throttle policy for power state so in here you can change it on battery and on ac of course on battery it's going to be quiet so least performant on ac it's going to be performance after that under app settings you have to just tweak this on your own with whatever that you want to enable and that's it that is for asus specific laptops now as for the hyperland specific settings themselves there's not really too much that we can enable but three different things that we can do now first thing is going into our hyperland config and turning on variable refresh rate so let's go to misc.conf and by the way if you're wondering what this modules folder is about it's basically taking one file and then splitting it into multiple different files it makes maintenance much easier and then you don't have to really look for a needle in a haystack for whichever feature that you're having to try and modify inside of your main hyperland config file i teach you how to make stuff modular along with making custom themes which is like this one basically all you have to do is just change a theme inside of a custom theme switcher and as you can see here the entirety of your setup adapts to that particular theme i teach you how to make this and not just copy and paste someone's dot files because that's much easier and not only that but it's also much easier for it to break so if you want to avoid all that and you want to learn how to make a setup like this one go ahead click the first link in the description and check out the program yes the first link is actually a program where I teach you how to make this yourself. So as you can see here, inside of theme switchers, I cover what theme switchers actually are, different kinds, how to set up wallpaper-based theme switching, custom theme switching, so on and so forth. Quite a lot of stuff. Over 10 hours of content. If you want to make something like this, it'll be quite easy and you won't have to mess around troubleshooting because you'll be building it up from scratch and you'll be having the pride of having your own setup built from scratch as well. Now, let's go back here and let's go here and as you can see i have turned on variable frame rate so vfr equals true this allows you to get just that little bit of extra performance out of your setup and also allows your 
monitor to display less frames when there's less stuff going on. So that's nice. Then after that, you want to turn off animations. This one might be a bit hard to do because, of course, you're using Hyperline for it being so pretty, most likely. So all you have to do there is just go into animations.conf. Make sure to turn off animations. Here I'm sourcing in animations file, but you can easily turn that off by going into your, but basically it's just turning off animations, shadows, and blur. When you do that, your, your setup is going to look pretty bland. As you can see, it even turns off the rounded corners. This is actually a separate feature that I've implemented called game mode, where I just have to switch the layout of the bar. This too, I teach you how to do it, by the way. But anyway, I just have to change the layout of the bar and then turn on game mode. And then the windows are all stuck to each other. Not just that, but then all the fancy effects are disabled. So there's no animations, nothing to get in the way of playing some games or even doing some high-end software development where every single process cycle, CPU cycle counts. That is just one part of what I teach you inside the program. So if you want to learn more, you can click the first link and check it out. Now let's turn this back on so it looks prettier to see at and let's go back to velvet line. Now, the last thing that I can tell you, the last tip that I can give you is to use a faster terminal like foot. So this is actually kitty that I'm using over here. Okay. And if I were to use the foot terminal or the foo terminal, there's not that much of a difference, except there is a slight difference when it comes to font rendering. Okay? It's very slight. If you've used the two terminals for quite some time, you, you will be able to tell the difference. But otherwise, apart from that, it's definitely light enough for you to not notice. And not just that, but then take a look at this. Okay. Let me open three kitty terminals in a row. Okay, that was three. So I'll do that again for you. That's it. Now watch when I do the same with foot. Yeah, it's just it feels way faster. Even if I cannot communicate it to you or articulate it to you on video, it's just so much faster when you actually hit the key on the keyboard. And 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 this is foot. Okay, this is the terminal itself. This is not the terminal foot running in client server mode. The client server mode would be way faster. But then I still have to implement this theme feature you see which is why I choose to still keep it going inside of the normal mode. And that's pretty much it. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.